youth group, I'm Ruben Dixon and I'm in my treehouse. And I'm talking about Acts 8 today. Um, so we continue after Acts 7, they talked about the uh, stoning of Stephen. And so we just kind of end off and Paul right here, who is Saul now, but he's eventually going to be Paul, is kind of approving of the killing of Stephen. And this is really where he starts his mission to start persecuting all the Christians and trying to stop the spread of Christianity. Which is really kind of ironic because the stopping of Christianity only made them spread farther. Which is really how this kind of starts because Philip is fleeing persecution from people like Saul who are trying to stop that. And he's in a uh, Samaritan city because he's trying to get to Jerusalem. And so he's uh, sharing the good news of the gospel in the city of Samaria. And um, he meets a guy, and his name is Simon, or Simon the Sorcerer. And so Simon is very good at drawing attention to himself through what he's doing is magic, as the Bible says. Um, so he's like getting all the people of Samaria to focus on him and draw like glory to himself, trying to make himself look great. And so when Philip comes in, he starts talking about the good news of Jesus, and he starts baptizing all of them and making Christians and having more people believe in Jesus. Um, so, once the good news is shared, John and Peter get word of it, and they start coming down to um, lay hands on the new Christians and give them the Holy Spirit. So Simon observes this, and he decides that he wants the power to give people the Holy Spirit because he again wants to bring glory to himself. So he comes up to Peter and he asks if he can buy the Holy Spirit from him. So I don't know how much you guys know, but really, that's not how it works. So Peter does not really like that, and he ends up saying this from the Bible. It says, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor let nor law in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven to you. For I see that you are an all gall of bitterness and beyond of iniquity. So Peter really is saying that, like, how on earth could you, like, ask that? Like, how could you ask to buy the Holy Spirit with money? So he's really just saying, like, that was horrible. You have to repent of your sins and uh, pray to see if you can be forgiven. Because Simon, and, like, Peter recognizes this in him, he wasn't trying to get the Holy Spirit to bring glory to God and have other people believe in Jesus. He was trying to get glory to himself and make himself look great. So to kind of recap, this part of Acts 8, Saul starts um, persecuting uh, the Christians and it starts his mission causing the spread of Christianity, again, which is ironic to kind of quote somebody from a movie, one often meets his destiny on the road he takes to avoid it. So Saul was trying to stop the spread of Christianity and really he only made it worse. He spread them farther and farther into the known world. And so that kind of leaves Philip in a Samaritan village where he starts preaching and we run into a person named Simon who asks if he can buy the Holy Spirit. And Peter very quickly rejects him and tells him that's not how it works. Hi, youth group. I'm Jordan Dixon, and I'm going to be talking to you of the other half of Acts 8. So it starts off with an angel telling Philip to go to the road between Jerusalem and Gaza. And while he's there, he meets an Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, who is the court official of Candace, the Ethiopian queen, and was in charge of her treasure. So, he had come to Jerusalem to worship, but had come back with the book of Isaiah, and he was reading it. And the angel uh, told Philip to go and talk to him about it. So, he went up in front of the chariot and asked him, Do you know what you're reading? He said, I don't have a guide, so how could I know? And so, uh, the Ethiopian invites him into the chariot, and he, while he's reading, uh, he asks him about the passage that I'm going to read to you right now. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shear is silent. So he opens not his mouth, and his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? for his life is taken away from the earth. And as he finished this, the Ethiopian asked Philip, Who is this man talking about, himself or another man? So Philip told him about the good news of Jesus, and how he died on the cross for our sins. 
And while he was telling this, uh, the Ethiopian saw a body of water and asked to be baptized. So Philip and the Ethiopian got out of the chariot, and Philip baptized him. Uh, dear God, thank you for this day, and thank you that even though we're all apart, we can still worship the Lord. And please help us to have boldness like Philip did. And, and please help us not to be afraid, even though everything around us can be so scary, especially with COVID-19. And please help everyone to be calm and everyone to be well. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for the lovely weather outside. Please help everyone uh, have a little time to spend out here in your beautiful creation. I uh, thank you for this chapter of Acts 8. Thank you for what it can teach us uh, to be bold and not be afraid to share our faith. Um, please help everyone just find something that they can apply to their lives through this. Uh, I pray for everyone who's um, in a position of leadership in this time of uh, panic, um, that you can just give them wisdom and the ability to discern the whatever decision is right and what we need to do to keep us safe. Uh, I pray for the health and safety of everyone in our church family, uh, just so we can keep everyone safe and everyone can be careful. In your name, amen. See you from the treehouse. Adios, gang.